Howdy, Tubal Cain again. I'm going to give you a little lesson today on how to identify uh, unknown threads. That is, uh, if you need to tap a hole for uh, whatever uh, screw or bolt you've got, uh, how do you identify that thread if it is unknown? Now, most of us can uh, tell just by looking at a thread what it is. All the common uh, United States threads are just are pretty easy to identify. Now, if it's off of a foreign uh, piece of machinery or a foreign car or truck, uh, then we got to suspect a metric. But to start with, if you need to uh, buy another bolt or a tap or something, you know, I can go down to my local Ace Hardware store and there's a clerk there, a lady with a mustache, and uh, she knows about as much threads, uh, about as much uh, about threads as, as anyone and can identify a lot of threads. But at home, we run across some threads that we're not sure what they are. So here's a couple tips on how to identify them. Uh, start with, uh, if you have uh, dies, you know, they're all marked with the appropriate size, so try screwing uh, your thread into the uh, die. Don't force it in, but if it goes in freely, why then that would be your thread size. There are various thread finders, like this one from Brownells. Actually, this is for gunsmiths, but uh, this covers a lot of the smaller holes that you might run into when you're doing fine work like gunsmithing. The uh, first row of holes here just gives you the diameter, but all the other ones are actually threaded. So you would try your screw in any one of the holes until it fits, and then you know what size it is. This one, for instance, is a 1032. It threads in there freely without binding. And uh, then there are other kinds of thread finders. If you go to the hardware store, sometimes you'll find uh, one of these uh, right there on the rack. Or back by the plumbing department, they have one of these to help identify some of the weird uh, plumbing threads that you might run into. But we're talking more about regular machine screw threads right now. Now here's another, <coughs> excuse me, thread finder. This is by Snap-on, and this is uh, strictly metric. Uh, I had one of these uh, with green in color that was for uh, regular American threads. I don't know what happened to it. But all you got to do here is stick uh, your uh, bolt into the hole until it, you find one that fits, and it's going to tell you what the uh, millimeter size is. And then as far as finding the pitch, uh, this originally had a thread pitch gauge in there. I don't know if the original one is gone, but here's a, a Sterrett uh, pitch gauge and talk more about using one of those in just a second but that's handy for your metric threads. Here's the more obvious uh, solution and that of course is just using a micrometer and uh, miking it across the threads. Now uh, this one is a half inch bolt but it reads just a little bit less. Uh, expect that most of the time that you're uh, if you're reading in thousands it's going to be a little bit less than uh, the actual uh, size that you would think it would be because uh, these are mass produced and they're made within a, a certain tolerance and that apparently is the tolerance about four thousandths under half inch. Uh, another way that I like real well is with the uh, digital micrometer or uh, digital calipers rather. I'll turn that on. I'm not sure if that shows up or not but uh, go ahead and uh, measure your thread with this and then if it falls in between and it seems like a weird uh, dimension I like to shift it into uh, a millimeter that going to show up and uh, then you might find that it's a millimeter uh, uh, dimension which makes it metric they too will be a little bit undersized so if it was a 14 uh, millimeter bolt, you know, it's going to read a little bit less than 14, so you've got to use a little common sense on that as well. But switching between English and metric will help you with your dial calipers. Once the diameter has been determined, then you can use your thread pitch gauge and I happen to know that this is going to read 13, so I selected the 13 all already. But we've got a series of leafs here showing uh, different pitches, and each one has a number on it. 
and you would just line up in this case the 13 and hold it up to the light or a white piece of paper or something to see if they are truly a, a good match now in the larger sizes that's pretty easy but when you get down to 40 threads or something like that it's very easy to be off by one or two sizes and if it ends up being a morphodite size that isn't in the book or in your charts then you probably uh, are not really on the correct uh, leaf of your uh, thread pitch gauge and this is a US or American one and then there are metrics as well so make sure you use the metric one uh, if you are uh, uh, looking for uh, the pitch on a metric bolt the uh, metric ones now uh, each leaf will read uh, the pitch and it's going to be just like a one or a one and a half because remember that the pitch on metric is uh, the distance between uh, the crest of one thread and the crest of the next thread not threads per inch but the distance between threads whereas in the English or American system it's number of threads per inch in regards to the pitch If you're trying to identify a really tiny thread, not like the one in my hands, but one that you might find in a, an instrument or a clock or the tiny screw that goes in your uh, eyeglass hinge, uh, an optical comparator would work. And, but that's a, a $5,000 machine that you're going to see in factory, certainly not at home. But some of you may know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to really talk about that now, but you might find something else on, the, uh, in, on YouTube uh, that would explain that. In review now, on American threads, uh, we're gonna our pitch is the number of threads in one inch. In metric, the pitch is the distance from one thread to the other. Now, in the American system, you can actually, in a coarse thread, put a ruler up to it and, and count the threads. That's kind of a crude method, but would give you an approximation. I'm not sure I've emphasized uh, the importance of metric threads. I've kind of brushed over that, but really the majority of the world uh, is on the metric system. It's, it is we here in America that are uh, the morphodites. But uh, here again is this complete set of metric uh, taps and dies, and there's charts here. And uh, sometimes you could just match up your, uh, your foreign thread with, with these. Now when I say foreign thread, General Motors and Caterpillar and all of the multinational uh, countries have really been on the metric system for quite a while and you'll notice that in regards to uh, what wrenches you need when you work on them but right now we're talking about uh, metric threads and the whole metric system uh, makes a lot more sense if you understand it than the uh, uh, American system in fact if you grew up on this you would think that the Americans are crazy because it just doesn't make sense where with uh, the metric system we're talking about usually an even number of millimeters like 10 millimeters and then maybe a pitch of uh, one and a half and if you look on this chart you'll see that I don't think that's going to show up but uh, 10 millimeter comes in a coarse and a fine and one of them is 1.25 pitch and the other is uh, 1.50 so you know it's a wonderful system and most of the world is on it, but in the, all of the work I do here in my own basement shop uh, really is, is the English system. A little ashamed of that, but that's what I grew up on. I hope this little lesson on identifying threads has been helpful to you. This is Tubal Cain saying, so long for now.